movie begins with an 11-year-old kid named North living in suburban Connecticut with his parents. His father is a workaholic, while his mother is fascinated with shopping, and both are busy with their own routines. North is a child prodigy who excels in academics, sports, and drama, and is admired by many for his hard work and polite demeanor. Everyone in town idolizes and praises him, yet North often feels unappreciated and unloved by his own parents. One evening, while eating dinner, he tries to talk to his parents about his day, but they continue to quarrel and neglect him, causing North to have a panic attack and collapse on the floor. Since that day, his life starts to get affected in every possible way. His academic performance starts to deteriorate, and the poor boy struggles to maintain focus in any activity, whether it's drama or sports. One afternoon, North loses six straight games of baseball, which is very unusual for him. The coach then comes up to him and inquires as to what's wrong. However, North is confused and conflicted in his life and wonders why he's appreciated by everyone except the folks who gave him life. But the coach doesn't understand him, so North simply says that he needs to work on some things and can't play right now. And thus, while everyone speculates on what might be bothering their most valuable player, North exits the field and heads straight to his special place. He's seen walking through old tree forts, beautiful riversides, and covered bridges, before revealing that his favorite spot is actually a huge armchair in a department store. A while later, as North reflects upon his life, a man dressed as the Easter Bunny arrives and takes a seat in front of him. When the man asks what's wrong, North begins to whine that his parents seem to be the only adults in his community who don't notice his talents. The Easter Bunny suggests that North simply express his feelings to his parents, but North believes that if they can't appreciate him, they don't deserve him. Hearing this, the man tells him that underappreciation is a frequent childhood lament and that, generally, he's stuck with the parents he has unlike baseball, where one can sign for free agency. After the Easter Bunny leaves, North remembers what he said earlier and creates a plan for how he could solve his problems. The next morning, the boy visits his friend Winchell and says that he intends to get away from his parents and places an advertisement to find better ones. Winchell becomes excited and believes it's a great idea. North is still unsure if that's the right thing to do, but Winchell insists that there's no turning back now and encourages North to move on with the plan. Afterward, North decides to give his parents one final shot to keep the family together. He tries to contact his mother, but she's too busy with her shopping. North then calls his father, who also appears to be busy with work, and tells him that whatever North wants to say can wait until dinner. Faced with such disregard from his parents, the boy ultimately decides to execute his plan and visits his friend. However, it turns out that Winchell has already printed the advertisement posters and is ready to take action. He then inquires about North's lawyer. When North replies that he doesn't have one, Winchell says he has the best one for him. Later, a man named Arthur Belt approaches North and informs him that he's now his lawyer. Now that a legit lawyer is involved, North decides to go through with it and challenge the very concept of family as we know it. News spreads rapidly and the impact is immediate. As children suddenly approach their parents with confidence they could only dream of. Due to this, parents begin to treat their children with greater respect and affection in the hopes that they'll not leave home. Meanwhile, North's parents are so shocked by the news that they instantly lapse into a coma. Soon, North's day arrives in court and the entire world is watching. Moments later, his parents are also brought to court, but they're still in an unconscious state. Following considerable discussion, the judge says that anyone who would fall asleep during a trial like this is unworthy of having a wonderful son like North. Therefore, the judge grants North his request and gives him two months to find new parents. If he hasn't chosen new parents by then, he'll be able to return to his original parents. However, if he's not physically in the arms of his new or original parents by then, he'll be sent to an orphanage. Following this, North's search is aired by a national news channel and he becomes a celebrity with people from all over the world wishing to adopt him. North then tours the world in search of better parents, and his first stop is Texas. There he meets his parental candidates, Mr. and Mrs. Tex, a wealthy couple who own a chain of steakhouses in Texas. They invite North to their extravagant mansion and promise to spend their wealth to satisfy North's desires. They take the kid on a tour of Texas, and he's initially charmed by their wealth and lavish lifestyle. Later, North meets a sharpshooting cowboy who looks exactly like the Easter Bunny Man. The man, however, claims that he's never been an Easter Bunny and that his name is Gabby. That evening, the family organizes a musical performance to welcome North. They also pile a lot of food on his dinner plate to make him chubby. When North asks why there's so much food, 
the couple discloses that they used to have a son named Buck, who used to eat a lot. It turns out that Buck eventually died of obesity. Meanwhile, North is troubled by the fact that the couple is now trying to replace Buck with his presence. Afterward, Gabby approaches North while he's sitting alone. The boy tells him that he doesn't want to be a shadow of someone else for the rest of his life. He left home because his parents didn't appreciate him, and now he doesn't want to change into someone else to be loved. Hearing this, Gabby also agrees that this place is not suited for him, and he advises him to move on. The following morning, North informs Mr. and Mrs. Tex of his decision not to continue further. The couple also accepts his decision and expresses gratitude for the opportunity. Before leaving, Gabby gives North a silver dollar with a bullet through the center as a good luck souvenir. Following this, North resumes his search for the ideal parents while remaining unaware of events at home. It turns out that Winchell has taken advantage of the situation to assemble a group and initiate a rebellion against all the parents. However, North is clueless about this and arrives in Hawaii where he's welcomed by the wealthy governor and Mrs. Ho. They offer him a luxurious life on their private island and North also appears to be enticed by it. Afterward, when North asks the couple if they have a dead child whose shoes he must fill, Mrs. Ho reveals that she's unable to conceive biological children and therefore North will be her first child. Hearing this, North is delighted and decides to accept them as his parents. The family arranges a celebration that evening and introduces North to other residents. North is also fascinated by all of these things until the governor displays a billboard showing a half-naked picture of him and declares that it would soon be on display across the United States. North is furious when he sees this, but the governor tries to explain that this is part of a tourism promotion since North's presence in Hawaii will draw tourists from the mainland. The couple then tries to persuade him that they're doing nothing wrong and that he's very important to them. However, North soon realizes that he's nothing more than a pawn for success in this family. The next morning, North runs into a guy who looks just like the Easter Bunny. He refers to the man as Gabby, although he turns out to be a random tourist photographer visiting Hawaii. The two then have a conversation, and North describes his current situation with the governor's family. The man then reminds the boy that parents should not exploit their children for selfish gain, and that he deserves better than this. Although North fell short in both Texas and Hawaii, he's not concerned because he still has plenty of time till his deadline. Meanwhile, as North makes his way to Alaska, things at home are heating up. Winchell's inspirational lectures have produced a wave, and children are still holding their parents emotionally hostage. Later, North ultimately arrives in Alaska to meet the prospects for his next parents. His first impression of Alaska is pleasant. The air's clean, the scenery is stunning, and most of all, it's far from everything and everyone. The Alaskan couple greets him and helps him in settling down. When North asks whether they have any personal reasons for adopting them, such as dead children or low self-esteem, the couple discloses that they don't want anything from him. They say that all they want is for North to follow his dreams and be his best version, which makes him happy. A short time later, the couple introduces North to an elderly man, saying he's his grandfather. It turns out that in their tradition, People send their old parents out to sea on an ice floe to die with dignity. The old man is visibly upset, but there's nothing he can do about it. As the family makes their long trek to sea, North takes the opportunity to get close to his new grandpa. He found him to be friendly and thoughtful. Knowing that his time is limited, he tries to take all the knowledge the old man has to offer. After days of traveling, they arrive at the sea, where the grandfather is supposed to die. The family then shares their goodbyes, and the grandfather is sent away, which upsets North. While coming back home, North again runs into the man who looks like the Easter Bunny. Disturbed by the incident, North tells him that not even his own selfish parents would send his grandfather away like that. The man then informs the kid that he must make a decision quickly because the deadline is only a week away. This surprises North because he's only just arrived, but the man reveals that the journey from home to the ice flows took seven weeks. Therefore, with time running out, desperate North speeds towards an uncertain future. He's upset because his parents haven't called him in two months, but he has no idea that they're still in a coma and are being displayed at a museum. Meanwhile, it turns out that North's mission has inspired children all over the world to abandon their parents and hire Belt and Winchell, both of whom are now wealthy and powerful. North's next family is Amish, but the size of their family and lack of modern conveniences immediately turns him off. While North is not one to make fast decisions, there are just seven days left and a world full of potential parents to evaluate. However, his experiences in Zaire, China, and Paris are equally unsuccessful. Three days before his deadline, North arrives in New York City to meet his final set of parents. North then meets the Nelson family, who have two other children. 
However, this time, North has found the perfect family, and during their time together, he realizes that they're everything he's ever wanted. Meanwhile, North's parents awaken from their coma, and Winchell takes them to a room. There, he records them pleading with North to return and promising to treat him better. Later that night, North receives a videotape sent by Winchell. But when he watches the video, it turns out that Winchell has manipulated the words to make it appear as if his parents no longer want him. Watching this crushes North's heart, and he eventually decides to stay with the Nelsons. Finally, North has started living with his new parents, who make him feel wanted and loved. But he has an intuition that something is still wrong because he misses his biological parents. He then decides to leave the Nelson family and bids them farewell. In despair, North escapes to New York City to hide from everyone. However, Winchell and Belt are worried that if North returns to his parents, their profitable business will fail, so they plan to kill him. Later, while an assassin pursues North to kill him, he escapes and stumbles across an old friend, Adam. Adam informs him about Winchell's actions during his absence and hands him the original video clip of his parents. Moments later, North is almost hit by the assassin, but he manages to run away and comes across an event. There, he meets a stand-up comedian who, once again, looks like the Easter Bunny. The two then watch the video clip, and North understands that no one will ever love him as much as his parents do. The man then drives North to the airport to return home. However, at the airport, a horde of kids who have followed in his steps become enraged, realizing that North is returning to his parents, and therefore, they proceed to attack him. Meanwhile, the Easter Bunny returns and invites him to board his van. North recognizes the delivery driver from previous encounters and asks if he's his guardian angel. The man denies meeting North and claims that, as a FedEx agent, he resembles a guardian of important items. North is delivered to his house before the deadline, but his parents are not there, and only Winchell awaits him. Winchell informs him that his parents are in his favorite spot, and he rushes there. As North runs towards his parents, an assassin shows up and pulls the trigger. Suddenly, North awakens in an empty mall, realizing he's been dreaming all along. The Easter Bunny appears moments later, and North tells him about his dream. The man then drives the boy home, where his parents, who have been anxious about his absence, happily greet him. It's all been a dream, but in his pocket, North discovers Gabby's silver dollar and says that he's always had it for good luck. 